Hello, welcome to day seven. We're at the end of our first week of the Omer. Woo, we did it! <laughs> we counted! <laughs> we counted! So this is Malchut of Chesed. Malchut is kingdom and majesty and dignity and, and things like that, words you would associate with God. And it's the idea that all of the other um, Sefi Rot or Midot, however you want to call them, are in this because you need it all together like to make God's kingdom or in that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, well, they're also all like divine emanations. So it's like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You need all of these things. Like you can't just have one of them to be fully divine. <laughs> um, mature love comes with and brings personal dignity. So you're not taking advantage of other people. You know your place. This is a lot about also, yeah, knowing your place and your special place and contribution in this world. Any love that is debilitating and breaks the human spirit is no love at all. Ooh. So that's a yes, good one. Yes, thank you. For love to be complete, it must have the dimension of personal sovereignty. So you are in complete control. Oh, sorry, I really <laughs> like that. I've been doing a lot of reading on this idea of that like, um, like power corrupts, but also powerlessness corrupts. Um, oh, yeah, I feel yeah, that. Yeah, right? So this, exactly. <laughs> so this notion that, um, that, that real love is it doesn't break the human spirit. It gives us place and purpose. Um, and, and so often we will try and trade, um, trade dignity for love, right? Or trade, um, trade knowing our place for feeling accepted, um, which isn't real love anyway. Knowing but, our place versus feeling accepted. Yeah. That's an, like, wait, so which one is better? So feeling in the idea, like knowing our place, so I, I know what I'm supposed to do. When I say I know my place, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know who I'm supposed to be. And oftentimes I have to sacrifice that in order to feel accepted. Um, so one of the ways that I think about that is like keeping kosher, right? If I'm out to dinner with a friend and um, and I want to eat something, I, I can't go to a specific place, right? Or I can't eat a specific yeah. thing because they want to eat it. Um, those kinds of things. Um, it would be so much easier for me to not stand for who I am in that moment. And yeah. For what's oh, what's yeah. true about me in that moment to just feel liked. Personal dignity. Yeah. Yeah. So not trading and sacrificing personal dignity for the sake of fake love. Because that's not fake. That's because, because real love is is yeah. well, being owned in my authenticity. That's a really good. I like how simple that is. Co the idea of kosher or veganism or, or anything like that to go with food things. Yeah. That's a really simple and easy way to get into this. Like... Well, there was something you just said. Oh, um, the powerlessness one. Yes, the powerlessness like, corrupt. The idea, because um, it was like on a women's Seder thing that I went to mm -hmm. where um, they talked about modern plagues. And so that was one of them was powerlessness. And that's how I feel like all the time when it comes to like thinking about the government and the world and how, how am I going to control like... Um, like corporate greed and like how, exactly. what, how am I going to do anything about that and or like even if I became a politician I'd still have to argue against the other ones and hopefully get my point across or something and you'd it, have like, to make concessions anyway. yeah and so I just feel so powerless sometimes and that makes me not want to do anything and but it, like I, I come back to the um, Candide uh, make our garden grow yes where all you can do is make your garden grow like I'm gonna be nice in my own way I'm gonna like recycle because I know it's good I'm gonna save water because I know it's good and I'm I, maybe I can't force other people to do that or I can't force people to stop fast fashion yeah but like at least I can save my clothes for years and years and, and only buy nice looking things or like buy stuff like every now and then yeah kind of it's thing. also not a zero-sum game because I think um, I think that idea of like powerlessness corrupts if we feel like we can't do anything we're like well why would I try anything right but what you were saying with that make our garden grow just try like that in that next moment to make the best choice you can make in that next moment um, and then and then in that next moment you do again um, and when we make mistakes we make mistakes and that's fine but yeah. like get Personal back on the path dignity yeah because yeah, you can't like if, if we're talking about personal dignity you can't just give up either yeah because then it's like you would have no dignity. You're just a person that, I don't know, stays home and does nothing and tries nothing and doesn't even try to experience the world yeah. and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's really easy. I mean, listen, power corrupts, we know that. Um, but this idea also of feeling like we don't have anything that also um, that also can be stifling. Um, yeah. and, and we lose the ability to affect because so we feel powerless. We lose our ability, we give up our ability to affect the world. 
like my first experience with that was in like seventh grade when I first learned about deforestation in the Amazon and I was like I'm gonna go save the world as like a little seventh grader and then like a week later I was already sad and depressed because I was like how am I gonna save the world I'm just a 13 year old kid yeah. <laughs> and like like my first experience with this kind of thing so overpowering it is. The grief of the world can be overpowered. But what is it? What's the Talmud quote? Don't be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Like, do justly now. Oh, um, yeah, I didn't know that one. But I do know that, like, it's not for you to... Or, like, we didn't yeah, start... Yeah, part of that. It's, well, it's like, yeah, we didn't start the fire, but, like... <laughs> um, but neither are you free to desist from it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not combining, for you alone, but neither are you free to yeah, desist from well, it. Combine two different songs, or, like, one Talmud and one song, and... Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. The Talmud is just a really big song of people arguing. Yeah, <laughs> trying to figure out how to live in like the messed up world. Facts. So, yeah, intimate feeling of nobility and regality. I want you to claim your nobility. Ooh. You are queen or king or however you want to be, a royal person. Yes. And you deserve to be here. You are enough. <laughs> yes. And all of those other things that are true. Like, don't just say they're cliches. They are They are true and we need you. Yeah. So, shine. Shine. <laughs> yes. Show love. Experience and, love. And you can do this exercise. Highlight an aspect in your love that has bolstered your spirit and enriched your life and celebrate. An aspect in my love that has bolstered my spirit. Ooh. Um, I would say my loyalty. Yeah. Like, it's allowed me to stick by friends that really deserve it. like yeah it's like they also have to deserve it not everybody right. like deserves my loyalty but it also allows me to stick by people long enough to learn about them and decide if they're good friends and stuff yeah i think for me it's my adaptability um in the sense that i i'm really i'm, I'm learning how to to accept the differences among people and how best to love people differently um, so my ability to love each person that I know in a way that is best for them, um, as I continue to work towards that, I think that's something that really makes me feel strong and powerful. It's awesome. Yay, we finished a week. So next week we start on Gevura, focusing all on that and its different aspects. Woo! Yay, thank you for joining week us. Week one! See you tomorrow.